Madden Football is the home of Super Bowl 56. And this historic matchup is brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Rams and the Bengals, and it's coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Tonight, it's all on the line. We play for the Lombardi Trophy, as it'll be the AFC champion Cincinnati Bengals taking on the NFC champions, the Los Angeles Rams. Brandon Gordon joined by my good friend Charles Davis. And Charles, it was maybe the most unlikely Super Bowl run we've seen in a long time. What a story. The Bengals had not won a playoff game since January of 1991. 4-11-1 last year, 2-14 the season before that. Bottom line, though, here they are, the AFC champs. And Brandon, this is one of the more remarkable turnarounds in NFL history in recent years. In fact, most of the guys on this team weren't even born the last time they won a playoff game. Although, not that long ago, they had a stretch where they were in the playoffs seemingly every year but couldn't win a playoff game. Now they've gotten that done, they're back in the Super Bowl. And remember, two Super Bowl appearances in their history. Number 16 and 23. Unfortunately, both times they ran into Joe Montana and the San Francisco 49ers. Meanwhile, the L.A. Rams, they are back in the Super Bowl for the second time in four years. Remember, they lost Super Bowl 53 to the Patriots in Atlanta, 13-3. But here they are trying to be the second team in two years after Tampa Bay last year to win the Super Bowl in their home stadium. And we go back to that Super Bowl loss to the Patriots. And remember, they were an offensive juggernaut at that time, but only put up three points in that game. And they have been a little bit of a tough team to pin down over the last few years. They've had their shares of ups and downs, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But they've always had that great defense, and they're looking to ride that crew to a Super Bowl crown. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. Open man is Uzama. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. And Charles, despite this list of key inactives that we see here, they've obviously still been pretty successful. Give everyone credit for this one, because to me, when that happens, key guys are out, the next man steps up and plays well, but that starts with the organization itself, all the way through. No excuses for guys being out, finding guys who are capable backups who can step up and play when they need them, and we've seen the results of that. This team knows how to work through things. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Back to Mixon on second down. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They give those two yards right back, and now they're looking at a third and ten. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. On third down, Burrow. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. Back deep, Brandon Powell. This is taken at the 18. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. So now we'll get a look at the other offensive unit as they come out for their first possession. They'll be led out by their quarterback in his 13th NFL season now. It's Matthew Stafford. And apparently all Matt Stafford needed was a ticket to L.A. to get his postseason career on track. Never won a playoff game in his decade plus in Detroit. But he cleared that hurdle a few weeks back. And now he has the Rams in position to play for the ultimate prize and in their home stadium. He takes this from the 30 to the 34. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Stafford going to give this to Akers. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up. Two 
to throw is Stafford. He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. And CD, we have seen some great runs the last few times we've been together, but I think we could at least put this one in our top five. That was a determined gallop there. And as a former defender, I can tell you with certainty, those are the ones that have you losing sleep at night. I would not like to be in that film room on Tuesday going over that one. Just a pretty poor effort defensively, and it leads to a big play. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 43. On the handoff, it's Akers. He gets it forward for four, maybe five, but the flags fly. And this one could be coming back. So that time they get the tight end on the hold. Normally he's a pretty good run blocker, but this time he just didn't get his arms extended and let go quickly enough. The flag came out as a result. On the give, this is Akers. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Andrew Whitworth, the dean of NFL tackles, called for the penalty that time. Now a run with Akers. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Here's Stafford. Going up top for Cup. He's got a man complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A big play that time through the air. 38 yards. Well, after the standard two-week layoff, you always wonder, how's your offense going to respond and come out and play here in the Super Bowl? Well, they got a great answer right there and almost a sigh of relief on that side of the field because now they've got to feel like they can use their entire playbook and game plan for this one. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. So that'll back him up five. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Stafford now to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Out of the gun, Stafford. Looking for the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jesse Bates. And the Bengals are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Well, they were going for the big strike right there, but this just terrific coverage by the defense in the end zone. And what helps being a safety in this spot is the back line of the end zone. Defensive back coaches always preach that's an extra defender because you know that they can only run so far. They can't run past you out of the back of the end zone. Then you know you can't be beat over the top and gives you a chance to go make a play. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at the 20. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. This is caught. It's Boyd. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. A big connection on that one. 30 yards. We're scoreless after one. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Bengals in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. From midfield now, Burrow. That's caught one more time by Boyd. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Eight. 
On second down, here's Mixon. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. And he is going to have a Bengals first down. At least it would appear that way. He didn't get it by much, but yes, they do get the conversion on third and one. Now Burrow on first down. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. Leonard Floyd came in there hard on the blitz and got him down nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. He seemed to have a reasonable amount of time in the pocket, but he couldn't get rid of the football, and the end result, Charles, him on the ground. Yeah, he's got to keep an internal clock to go along with his offensive line. When you're talking about three, four, five seconds, that's a reasonable amount of time to expect to deliver the ball downfield. So great to try and complete a pass, but it's equally important to know when to throw the football away, too. Yeah, they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Now Burrow. Here's Higgins out on the right side. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And Burrow going to be hit and taken down. They got him. Aaron Donald coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep the, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. Look it up into the roof, and he muffs it. It's loose, and the Bengals grab it. Was hoping to make a play there on the return with his speed. Instead, he makes a play for the other side. Yeah, and how many times have we heard coaches say, you know, sometimes it's not really about those X's and O's we drop. It's about those Jimmys and Joes. <laughs> and when you have a punt returner, he's one of those Jimmys and Joes, one of the best athletes. He's unable to make the play that they were seeking, though. Two minutes on the clock in the second quarter of this Super Bowl. I'm here all day. Second and seven, Burrow. And he's got his man in stride, complete. Only three yards on the catch. It's Keep third going. down. Running, man. Here's Burrow. And he fends him off. But in the end, the pressure too great, and he goes down. Von Miller. Gets in there to drop him for a loss of 13 yards, and it's also fourth down now. So, Charles, no turnovers yet for this offense, but those sacks now, they're starting to pile up. And one thing usually leads to another because they've got to figure out how the offensive line and everyone else involved in protection can keep their quarterback upright and allow him a chance to throw the ball downfield. So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. This will be a 34-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good. And we have action on the scoreboard just before halftime. It's 3-0. So the fumble recovery had him set up in ideal field position, but they can muster only three points out of it. Yeah, when you're able to force turnovers, especially when it results in field position like they had, you really want to make it hurt here. They take the field goal. That's definitely not what they were hoping for. On oh, the return is Brandon Powell. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And with him trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get in the field goal range. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. 
Now Stafford. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. Throwing on third down, Stafford. Got a man open, it's Tyler Higby. Room here to run, and down inside the 10 at the 9. A big play there just before halftime. Well, for a tight end, he can definitely motor, and he shows off the wheels there after the catch as he's able to shake free. Yeah, and this is what we mean when we talk about flipping the field, having your offense look at going a long way to a short way after he makes a play. His ability to do that, evident. He's able to make the catch there, keep his momentum going, and just continue downfield. And the next-gen stats show us the tale of how much yardage he was able to tack on after the catch. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Stafford looks to throw again. They'll set up the screen here to Akers. Touchdown! With a first touchdown of the Super Bowl and a long one at that. And the Rams have taken the lead. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And that is off the left, upright. It's no good. Now he's back out there to boom this one away, maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee, and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Joe Burrow and the Bengals set to go back on offense. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits on, keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with a quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Here's second and 10. And Jamar Chase, the intended receiver. And it's second down. Not wanting to take a chance this time. They'll keep it on the ground. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. But one more time, they'll keep it on the ground. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. Here's Kevin Huber now as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And with five seconds to go, this will likely be our final play. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So these two teams will head to the locker room as we hit halftime in Super Bowl 56. As we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. What a season this has been. Hard to believe it ends tonight, as we'll get back to you guys for the second half of this Super Bowl in just a moment. On now to a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for the Rams, and it's been the passing game that's gotten them to where they are, two quarters away from a possible Super Bowl title. Meanwhile, for the Bengals, we check on their numbers on the ground in the first half, as they know they'll need to be better to overcome this halftime deficit.
Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. These two teams sat through a longer than usual 30-minute wait, but we're back in action here in the Super Bowl. Here's Powell on the return. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Rams offense ready to begin quarter number three. And I think you'd have to say their coaching staff, all things considered, had to be pleased with their performance in the first half of this Super Bowl. Definitely pleased, doing their best not to show it to their team, of course, because as you and I both know, their mantra all season long has been finish. Get the job done. They know how close they are to lifting that trophy. One more solid half of football, and they can do exactly that. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. So that, that was a very nice play, Charles, from a very speedy cornerback. And I think really good defenders can sniff out those screen passes, just something that they can feel, something that they can sense about how the quarterback drops back or how the linemen are just a little slow to block the oncoming rushers. He read it perfectly, got in there, and made the play. And if you're wondering how fast he was going, Next Gen Stats clocked him at close to 21 miles an hour. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Here's Stafford. That's out to the flat for Akers. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up the first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? They'll run on first down with Akers. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Stafford. Eluding the pressure right. That'll be caught. It's cut. And he'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 30-yard line. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all clock just ran out I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was so a little bit of a stiffer challenge now first and 15 following the delay of game Stafford open man right side is cut complete and inside the 20 before he's brought down that was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. They'll give this to Akers running right. And he'll take this one down near the 15. 
And a tackle there by Jermaine Pratt. Still nine remaining on second down. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And this throw incomplete. Well, the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball. the gun on third down Stafford he'll dump this off to Akers and they'll get him down short of the first down right on the 10 yard line five yards not enough and it'll be fourth down we can make this one pretty simple walked up all of his progressions downfield forced to get it to his running back but how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down So now the Rams send out the field goal team here. And they're not going to get the kick off in time. That's going to set them back five yards. So now the Rams send out the field goal team here. Gay's kick is good. And the lead will increase to six now. It's nine to three. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. I would say that you pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept, kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though, three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. here in the Super Bowl. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Bengals. They've got the football, but they trail here as we get rolling in quarter number four. Punting now is Huber as he sends it away. Here's Powell on the return. It's a 41-yard punt, but just a net of 31 following the run back. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. 
Get a look at this offense led by Cooper Cup as they make their way back onto the field. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. There he goes, right side. Touchdown, L.A. Tyler Higby, 70 yards. And the Rams are moving closer to their second Super Bowl title in franchise history. I tell you, for a defender, that's got to be a scary sight, seeing a big man like this with a head of steam behind him as he makes that catch and then turns up field. Yeah, normally when you talk about tight ends, you immediately begin talking about them rumbling down the field. But to me, he was pretty well gliding downfield there. Very athletic for a big man, and he takes this one all the way to pay dirt. Now Stafford will come up, try to get his guys a two-point conversion. Stafford's going to try and throw for it. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Popular down near the goal line. Quick slant. Nice job there to get in, knock it away. It was. And one of the other things you're concerned about when you throw that route is to make sure your offensive linemen use their leverage to get the hands of the defensive front down so you can throw it through that little bit of crowd and get it to the receiver. In this event, they did, but a nice play by the defender knocking it away. After the touchdown, it's Gay to kick this one away. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And we're at the time in this Super Bowl where, look, they need points. And they need them badly. Trailing here in the fourth quarter as they begin this drive first and ten. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Man open, that's Jamar Chase complete. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Open man is Uzama. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. To the air again, Burrow. Dumps it off to Mixon. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. To throw again on second down. Burrow. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Touchdown, Bengals. Drew Sample. A 20-yard touchdown. And the Bengals have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. Evan McPherson now for the PAT. And he 
Somebody knocks it through. That makes it a five-point ball game. It's 15 to 10 now. So this drive spans seven plays, and it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. From the end zone, here comes Brandon Powell. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The offense for Los Angeles returns to the field. And the tension ratcheting up all around. A one-score game. Fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. This is what you folks came for. Every play with the potential to win or lose a title as they look to drain some time off this clock. Now a first down throw. Stafford. He'll check this down to Akers out of the backfield. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Rams football here as we get your reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Now it's Stafford escaping the pressure right. He'll get this into the hands of Van Jefferson. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. They'll run out of the gun with Akers. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. They'll go again here with Akers. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. So here we go, Charles. Third down. Any chance you're throwing? I don't think so. I think you got to keep the clock rolling here. So indeed, they did keep it on the ground, but now it's fourth down. So this one's maybe not quite over. The clock is still their ally, though. So just no panic here. Let it run all the way down. Stafford. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And this won't be enough. A good secure tackle, and they stop him a few yards shy at the 46. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Going right back to Beckham here, complete. And he will go out right near the 35-yard line. I can hear it right now that most people in our business are saying, why aren't they running the football? I happen to agree with this strategy. They've had success all game long. I don't think they should go away from it. Too often, teams go into that protect mode and end up giving away the football. This team has stayed aggressive and is working out for them. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Stafford going to throw it. He'll get this to Akers out of the backfield. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football.
So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Oh, now look at this. They're lining up to add three more. A little insult to injury here late in the game. He connected on his first. This from 41. And Gay knocks this one through. And that'll push the lead up to eight. But from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. And this is going to be snuffed out. The Bengals recover. Uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us well when you score on special teams 93 percent of the time you win the game i'm still waiting to see that number is empirical he's going to take a shot right away for the end zone and that is incomplete so he's unable to complete it there and just not the game that you would expect from him he's been off the mark really start to finish yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on is he a little bit dinged up here or is it just off just by a bit maybe he can get it back in this situation he'll need to now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Now one more shot at it. Obviously, again, they've got to go for the end zone. Well, we've seen it happen before. How about Aaron Rodgers throughout his career? He seems to pull it off about every other week. But if I'm the defense, I'm rushing the quarterback and making him move away from his throwing arm. That makes it a little bit tougher to get it downfield. It got his man complete. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. The Rams have won the Super Bowl, and they will get the Lombardi Trophy. For the victors getting to hoist that Lombardi Trophy, you know, we've talked to guys that have done it, and they say there's no better feeling in sports. I don't know how there can be. The, the, the journey to get to this game is incredible. And then to finally break through and win it when all eyes are on this game alone because there's nothing else going on, that's just got to be absolutely amazing. That The task, incredible. But the accomplishment, forever.